Hey folks, it's your main man E here from Follow the Leader Canine and I wanted to do a video talking about boarding and training and you know what are three benefits from sending the dog here overnight um, either Monday through Friday or 24-7 from anywhere from three to ten weeks. Now one of the main benefits that you're going to get to see is you're really just going to get to see for real Z like what is your dog really capable of you know if everything is done by a professional trainer and everything is done properly is your dog still that dog that barks? Are they still that dog that pulls on the leash? Are they still that dog that goes crazy when you leave the home, digs in the yard, barks, and whatever, you know? Or, or do you notice after they go to a trainer that you go, man, that's weird. They completely stop doing that behavior and they don't even seem to miss doing the behavior. This behavior that I just thought my dog was, you know, incapable of stopping. Oh, they don't do it anymore. Mm. So that can be really helpful. Just to, first of all, give you that chance to see, oh, my dog is totally trainable. Oh, yeah, my dog is actually trainable and all these behaviors are behaviors that my dog has learned. And if I were to do things differently, yes, my dog's behavior would change. And that's priceless in my opinion, because so often we're convinced, oh my God, my dog just acts this way and there is an absolutely no way to change it. This is just who they are. And uh, this, this is not a training issue, this is just my dog. And so a board and train can give you the chance to go. You know, if it's done with the right trainer, you should see. Wow, that's crazy. My dog can totally walk down a busy street on a leash. My dog can totally go to a coffee shop. My dog can totally have guests over and not be jumping on them. Oh, my dog can totally just be calm and not be crying, whining, going crazy every time something happens. So that's the first takeaway. The second takeaway is you're going to get a real chance to see how much of this is really the dog. You know, when you send your dog to a board and train, if it's a really qualified, truly master trainer who is, you know, flexible in their approaches, um, they should be able to get a lot of progress out of the dog. And if they're not able to get a lot of the progress out of the dog, then, you know, that's going to indicate you actually have a very difficult dog. Or you have a dog that may take a lot of nuance or may take a lot of different approaches and trying different things because you sent them to the trainer, they were there for a week, they were there for two weeks, and even the trainer couldn't get them to do the stuff that <laughs> you're struggling to get them to do. I mean, if you send the dog to a board and train and they're going, man, I can't get him to stop pulling on the leash. Man, I can't get him to stop barking. I can't get him to settle in a crate. Well, folks, that's, you know, good to know that you really have a dog that is really challenging. Um, and that, yeah, you know, you might not be fair to have the type of expectations you'd have with a dog that's a lot easier. Well, that brings us to the third point. Now, the third takeaway from a board and train is if the client is struggling with the dog and the trainer, I, no, Biscuit, no, 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 no. Like here with Biscuit, for example, like he struggles with eating sticks. No, no. Um, he struggles with eating sticks. And so, like, right here in this video, like, you know, if the trainer can get the dog to stop doing the stuff you want him to stop doing, and the trainer can get the dog to do the things you'd like the dog to do, well, then you have the ability to ask the trainer, what did you do to get the dog to do these things? And the trainer will be able to tell you, hey, here's what I did. And um, we can say with certainty that if you do what I do, you, your dog will do what it does with me. Right. So like, let's say you have a dog that's really struggling. It goes to a board and train. And after four weeks, you, oh my God, that's crazy with you. He doesn't want to attack old ladies with you. He doesn't bark anymore with you. He's super calm, man. With me, he does all these things. So first of all, I know he can do these things. Okay. That's good. Second of all, I know, obviously it's not that the dog is inherently just crazy. It's obviously me. I'm doing something because in three weeks or four weeks or a month, the dog's very different. You know, the <laughs> Only thing that has changed is the environment and the handler. The dog is still the same dog. So then I know, oh man, this is interesting. This has to do with me and the way I interact with the dog or the way I operate my household or the way I, um, you know, feel about dogs or what I think about dogs or the way I, you know, use dogs to fulfill myself in my lifetime. And then, you know, after you see that, then you can go, okay, well, what did this trainer do that got the dog to be this dog that I didn't think I could have? and got the dog to be much better behaved. And now I need to ask that trainer and probably hire them to coach me and teach me um, if I'm struggling following through. Yeah, it may take additional time for the own, for the you know trainer to train me and really help me better understand things and 
know more clearly what am I going to need to do. So those are basically the three benefits from sending your dog to an overnight program is you can see for sure everything was done 24 seven properly with the dog. This is what the dog is capable of if everything is done properly 24 hours a day, five to seven days a week. Okay. Second of all, you're able to see, wow, how much of this dog is actually who I think they are and how much of it can be trained. And wow, I actually do have a really, really challenging dog. And man, it's understandable that I'm struggling so much. Um, or wow, I actually have a pretty easy dog here. And um, man, I really need to really deeply think about how is it that this dog that, you know, is easy for the trainer is really so hard for me. And, and where did we go wrong? And what have we done that we need to do differently? And, you know, if I ask the trainer and I watch the trainer's videos and I read the books and do the homework the trainer suggests, you know, I should start to get a little bit of a picture of how I need to change my behavior. I need to change my feelings. I need to change the way that I'm operating my household. If I want the dog to be how they are with the trainer. Um, and, you know, let's face it, folks, like not everyone is going to find it as easy as everyone else to reinforce what the trainer does. Sometimes there's deep emotional uh, feelings about our dogs. There's expectations we have. Sometimes we've had a relationship with them for years. Or even we've had relationships, you know, in my family's case, we had relationships with dogs for decades. And it took my entire family really changing our whole culture of dog ownership and going, oh man, like, man, we really, <laughs> man, we really need to change how we think about these dogs if we want to be able to have uh, dogs that are like this, really calm. So that's it, folks. Three takeaways, uh, positives from doing a board and train. And, um, you know, I hope you found this video helpful and gives you a little bit for more information. If you want to do a board and train with us, you want to do boarding and training with somebody else. You know, those are three benefits that you're going to be able to accrue for sure. Okay, folks, so I hope you found this video helpful. Remember, as always, we don't blame them, we train them. And of course, you can find my poetry book online, Loving, Leading, and Losing Stories from the Dogs That Trained Me. Okay, folks, until next time, we'll see you then. Take care.